Um, all right, court is ready to proceed. Um, the appellant may, and both sides will have 15 minutes, and the appellant may reserve up to five. May it please the court, my name is Greg Huber. I represent the appellants in this case. I'd like to reserve three minutes for rebuttal time. I'd like to start this argument by examining some of the facts that relate to this case. This case uh, starts with the Nexus Pipeline Company, which is a limited liability corporation principally located in Houston, Texas. Nexus would like to construct and install a 36-inch high-pressure gas line across property owned by private property owners. The case really started with the, the notice that was sent by Nexus to property owners. A copy of the notice is attached to Nexus's brief for summary judgment before the trial court. The appellants would respectfully ask that the court look at that notice. This notice, essentially sent to the property owner from Nexus, explains a little bit about what they're doing. They want to install a, private, uh, a pipeline, and they want access to your private property, and are asking in this notice that you sign a permission form. The notice is also accompanied by a document that explains what the survey activities amount to. The notice in bold print and underlined tells the property owner, if you do not return the survey authorization form, which allows permission. <coughs> Nexus hereby informs you of its intent to enter and conduct survey activities on your property between the dates of June 29th and July 29th. So any property owner who, who owns property received this and was advised that they are wanted that a consent is requested in writing, but if you do not consent, we will be on your property between the months or the days of June 29th and July 29th. And that is the due process afforded the property owner with respect to their arrival at your property. I think Judge Lamar. What authority do they have to uh, go on the uh, property absent? That's an excellent question, Your Honor. The authority is cited in the notice as being section 163.03 and 1723.01. Now, if a reader opens up the statute, 1723.01 is a general statute that creates general powers. The statute is entitled Appropriations by Certain Corporations. It's an appropriation statute, and it simply says that a gas pipeline company may conduct survey activities and, and the word and is critical in this case, and may appropriate as the company sees necessary. If I paraphrase it, that's it. That's all it says. That statute does not explain when this power shall be exercised and it does not explain the procedure required by the power. Is that the only relevant statute? No, no, Your Honor, the, the next statute that Nexus cites right out of the gate is section 163.03. 163.03 is critical to the appeal in this case because Nexus did not follow section 163.03. If the court looks, well, let me read section 163.03. Chapter 163 is the statute that describes the procedure by which you gain a right to enter private property in the state of Ohio. It is the procedural statute that says when you acquire that right. It's a specific statute. In fact, 1723 defers to chapter 163 and 1723.02, but let me get back to Judge Whitmore's question. Section 163.03 says an agency may, prior to or subsequent to the filing of a petition pursuant to section 163.05, enter upon lands for the purpose of making a survey of drillings as necessary. The critical language in this statute is the language pursuant to section 163.05. So if a reader then turns to 163.05, 
the reader quickly finds out that that statute requires that the requirements of 163.04 and 041 have to be met first. So, of course, you then turn to 163.04 and you're advised by the state legislature that no agency shall take activity except as necessary and you're advised under 04 that 30 days prior to the filing of the petition the company or agency that is taking action shall provide a 163.041 notice. That notice, if this court does anything, should be examined carefully. The notice essentially is the due process right afforded to the property owner with respect to somebody arriving on your doorstep. The notice is important because it tells you the reason for why they're there. And did the notice, are you taking the position uh, that the notice does not provide the reasons why Nexus would be there? This notice doesn't comply with 163.041. The notice in 163.01 tells you we have, it's entitled an intent to appropriate. And it also tells you that you have an action that's being taken and that we may not agree. And if we don't agree, we may go to the court for resolution. And in court, you have a right to challenge the necessity of what you're doing, the purpose of what is occurring, and you have the right to challenge the issue of compensation. The notice, as described in 163.05, is specific. It's literally written out. Now, the appellants respectfully argue that the trial court in this case agreed with Nexus and agreed that 163.03, uh, the, the entry statute, applies in this case. Nexus seems to want to avoid having to give a property owner a notice of intent to acquire by saying that their right to survey is independent because they're not appropriating. And the real absurdity of the trial court's decision is that the trial court says this company is not appropriating. And mind you, this is a private, for-profit LLC with no power of eminent domain. This company is coming to your property and wants to survey, but they are not appropriating. Well, I read the trial court's order to say that, and, and certainly Nexus's argument is that they were not appropriating at that, at that time. Not that they weren't going to at some time in the future. But look at the uh, decision in Cleveland Bakers that we decided. In Cleveland Bakers in 1981, the 8th District was confronted with a challenge to 163.03. The court, the 8th District Court, went through 163 and outlined all of those procedural due process protections and came back to the appellant and said, yes, if powers are granted that are arbitrary or unreasonable, then there's an infringement on private property right. Because remember, in Norwood versus Horney, the recent decision from the Supreme Court by Judge O'Connor, a private property's right is fundamental. It's supposed to be examined under a strict, strict basis. The interest court went through 163.03 and said, that procedure protects you. The end result of this case well, let me stop you there. That court did not consider uh, Revised Code 1723. Is that correct? That's correct. That was not before the 8th District. But the critical rule in, in, in statutory interpretation is essentially set out in the case I cited, Board of Park Commissioners, where the case law cited by the Supreme Court states that Quote, under the Cardinal Rule of Statutory Construction, all statutes which relate to the same general subject matter must be read together. So what I'm explaining is that if Nexus tells the property owner in their first notice that the authority for their action is 163.03, and that statute requires a petition under 163.05, that law needs to be followed to the T. 
that law is what provides the due process because if we just utilize 1723, we've now moved beyond Cleveland Baker where the gas pipeline company is given an, an arbitrary power. In this case, if you look at the consequence of what the trial courts have allowed so far up to this point, and I'm hoping it stops here, the end result is this notice which says we're coming onto your property whether you give us permission or not. This notice is a far cry from the notice defined by the state legislatures in 163.041 where you actually have recourse. They're telling you if we don't agree, we may go to common police court, you may challenge necessity, you may challenge purpose, you may challenge compensation. That's critical. That keeps the balance between what the pipeline company must do if they're going to do this and the right of the property owner because this, if a court takes any time to think about it, is a recipe for trouble. People have been approached by Nexus representatives because of the emotional anger over this by people with sidearms. That's how much emotional trouble comes out of this kind of process. And it's been occurring. Did I understand you, Council? Pardon me for interrupting. I want to make, make sure that I understand. Did I understand you to say that the notice that you've just made reference to included a reference to Revised Code 163? Let me read it to you. We, and this is dated, this is where this all starts, June 24, 2015. This letter I'm reading was directed to appellant Jane Morris. We ask again that you provide permission to Nexus and direct you to Ohio Revised Code Sections 163.03 and 1723.01. Okay, so they've referenced both. Okay. Well, they have to. The, the Section 163.03 is literally entitled right of entry, and it tells you when you can do it. So my point is that if this company is going to utilize state code to gain access to private property, they need to follow each part of the state code. And if you look at in your rebuttal time, if you want to sum up or if you want to continue, that's up to you. I think I'll wait. All right. Sorry. I hear what attorney use has okay. to say. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is James Hughes, and I am joined by my partner Frank Merrill from the law firm of Bricker and Eckler and by our client representative, Jeff Daner, who is counsel for the parent of Nexus. Um, I'm here before you today advocating on behalf of Nexus that you affirm the trial court's decision. The trial court held 1723.01 independently grants Nexus access to survey, underlying survey property, without permission. The trial court also held that 163.03 independently and separately grants Nexus the same right. Every court that has looked at this issue has ruled consistent with the trial court in this case. Nexus has been in front of 11 courts, 11 county courts of common pleas. There are 17 decisions that have ruled consistently with the trial court here, granting Nexus access under both statutes. 17 decisions from 11 county courts of common pleas on this project. In addition, there are two federal cases cited in the briefs that serve as precedent for this same position. Judge Graham and Judge Frost, both of the United States District Court for the Southern District of Ohio, have looked at this issue and they both held that both statutes give independent authority to access for survey, and I emphasize survey. There are two um, Ohio appellate cases that also serve as precedent, the Cleveland Bakers Union case and the City of Beaver Creek case. Those are the second and eighth appellate districts, respectively. So let's talk about what we're here for. What appellants have done is they've conflated the issues of survey with appropriation. Mr. Huber went 
on um, here today and in his brief about the different statutory requirements under Chapter 163 that are required to appropriate property. We are not here to appropriate property. All of those requirements set forth in 163 are to appropriate. In order to survey under 163.03, an entity has to be an agency, they have to give notice, and they must be in the process of appropriating. The, the um, city be Meaning that they have to already have filed some sort of document seeking appropriation? No. No, the city of Beaver Creek laid out the text, um, and that's the second appellate district. And, and what they said is, um, and this turns on their argument prior to or subsequent to, and they've reached the conclusion, they've interpreted that to mean that they must file a petition to appropriate as a prerequisite to um, surveying, and that's not the case. Beaver Creek struck that down. They said, quote, we cannot agree with the landowner that only those agencies which have begun the appropriating procedures can qualify as an agency, period. They were specifically struck down that argument. And let me tell you why. As a practical matter, the, the practical sequence of surveying is to determine whether or not to appropriate. You go out, you survey. Nexus is survey to determine whether there are any impediments to construction wetlands, cultural artifacts, cemeteries, bedrock. If these impediments are there, they're not going to build the pipeline there. Based upon these surveys, they've identified these impediments. They're going to move the pipeline to other property. Under the appellant's argument, they're saying that you must file a petition to appropriate those properties from which you've just moved the pipeline. I'm not sure that that's the result that they want, let me, let me extend that argument. 163.04 says that in order to appropriate, you must first appraise the property and you must extend a good faith offer to the landowner to appropriate. We're not appropriating. But this points out the fallacy of their argument that you must file a petition just to survey. Well. If we are going to survey, we first have to appraise and we have to extend a good faith offer. What if they accept that offer? So you'd have to. Under their theory, have we have to, to appropriate. Every person, every homeowner whose property you go on to survey, you have to make an offer. No. Under survey, under Ohio law. No, no, no. I'm saying if you follow your argument. Yes, yes, Your Honor. Exactly. Yes. We would have to continue the appropriation process even though we've obtained, negotiated an easement to go onto that property. There's two ways to acquire property, by negotiation or by appropriation. So the fallacy of their arguments pointed out, uh, Judge Whitmore, um, on, on that particular point. But the, um, the, the, the distinction between you know 163.03 and 1723, this, this specific versus general, 17, chapter 17 of the Ohio Revised Code deals with corporations. Okay, corporations have power, only power conferred upon them by statute in, seven, in chapter 17. Chapter 1723 confers the, the power to survey and appropriate on natural gas companies like Nexus, coal companies, petroleum companies, electric utilities, companies deriving electricity off of hydro hydropower dams. That's what 1723 says. It says if you're that kind of company, you can appropriate, or you can survey, and you can appropriate. But if you're going to appropriate, you have to go to chapter 116 and jump through all the hoops that M Mr. Huber just identified. So 163, what's the purpose of 163? It sounds redundant, it is. 163 is the general power of appropriation statute for any entity in the state of Ohio. Private entities, public entities. If you are a private or public entity agency, um, then you can appropriate 
if you jump through the hoops in chapter 163. So actually 1723 is the more specific because it deals with survey authority for natural gas companies like Nexus. 163 doesn't confer any authority to appropriate. It just says if you are going to appropriate, here's how you do it. Now, if the survey shows that appropriations is the way to go, the next step is what? When do the landowners get an opportunity to give their input and how are their rights balanced against the, uh, the company's need to pick a certain piece of geography for the pipeline? Then you must file, well, for a natural gas company building an interstate pipeline, they, they can seek to appropriate under state law or federal law. If they're seeking to appropriate under state law, they file a petition under 163.05. They have to give notice, which is a separate notice set forth in 04, than the notice to survey, which is in 03. They have to give notice. They have to take an, uh, get an appraisal of the property. They have to extend a good faith offer to acquire the property. And if that fails, then they have to go through the appropriation process by filing a petition in the Court of Common Pleas. So, so there's no other um, geographical issues once that survey has been done. It's only a question of cost and, and so forth. So there's, there's not another avenue to um, say for the, for the landowner, the farm or whomever. Uh, we think it's too much of a burden to cut off or bisect our farm and put the pump station too close to the house and all of that. When is all of that considered? It, it may not be relevant here, and I don't want to... Well, the, 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 that, that's pertinent. It's relevant, and, and it, it points out the distinction between survey and appropriation. Again, once the property is surveyed and it's determined that the pipeline can be built through there, then Nexus will go um, acquire the right to appropriate. They can do that under state law. They can do that under federal law. In order to appropriate, they have to pay for the fair value for the property. But once they obtain the authority to appropriate, they become basically a utility that has the power of eminent domain. Once they have the authority to appropriate, they have eminent domain authority. So therefore, they may appropriate as long as they pay fair value for the property. We're, we're way, way far away from, from that. The, but, but where you fall on the pipeline or where your property is, uh, do they pay more for the inconvenience of having the trucks uh, pulling up and taking the oil out of the container where the pump wellhead is? That's, that's a much greater inconvenience to the landowner than simply having a silent pipeline going under your land. Yes, Your Honor. All of those factors are taken into consideration at, at the uh, point where you determine fair market value. What is the fair market value that, that the pipeline company must pay for the use of the property? So that's the taking, but we're, we're not into the taking process. It's a totally separate process. So. What we have here are two statutes. Both confer the right of, of, of survey rights on Nexus. Period. End of discussion. These statutes are clear. They're unambiguous. As you know, in order to um, resort to the rules of construction, statutory construction, you must have an ambiguous statute. You must have an unclear statute. What the appellants are trying to do here is trying to convince you that these statutes are unclear. So therefore, they're asking you to resort to the rules of construction. We don't think that that's proper. But even if you do resort to the rules of construction, we believe that you must resort to the more specific statute, which is 1723.01, which deals with natural gas companies like Nexus here. Another point I want to make, um, kind of getting away from the, um, the uh, statutes, is that 
there's an issue of waiver here. Uh, there are six assignments of error that were set forth in this court. The appellants did not make four of those arguments below. So it's our position that those four arguments are waived. The rule of waiver is, is well settled in the state of Ohio. It's well settled in this appellate district. And the reason for the, that rule is to give credibility to the appellate process. The appellate process is designed in order to have <coughs> this court review the process and procedures invoked by the trial court below. Here, you don't have that ability to review the trial court on these four assignments of error because they weren't raised below. This, the rule's not based upon an I got you moment. This isn't a got, I got you moment. It's the rule of law in the state of Ohio. Um, <clears throat> so I've got probably a minute, minute and a half left. Does the court have any other questions on the distinction between appropriation and survey or the balance between the two statutes? Okay, so in sum, I'd just like to say that every court, repeat, that every court that's looked at this issue, 17 decisions from this project from 11 different counties in the state of Ohio have all ruled in Nexus's favor. Every court that's looked at this issue has held the same way on both statutes. There's two federal courts that serve as precedent, and there's two Ohio appellate court decisions that also serve as precedent. There's not one case that the appellants have cited in support of their position. There's no precedent in support of their position. What they've done is they've resorted to a very convoluted argument, and they're trying to put a square peg into a round hole. They're trying to put the survey process into the appropriations process. And, and, and that's, 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 that's the only argument that they have, and that argument's been specifically rejected by several well-reasoned decisions. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. As the court looks at what Nexus proposes, we'd ask the court to look at the survey activity. This activity involves digging holes on your property. It's attached to the notice. It involves cutting trees smaller than two inches. It involves bringing drilling equipment upon the property. The end result of the trial court's decision, if this survey activity is supported, is that you as a property owner have no way to challenge the necessity of it because they're coming onto your property June 29th to July 29th, you've been told. You have no way to explain or argue about where the holes should be or whether there should be a hole or how many holes. You have no way to argue about the drilling equipment that they told you they may need to bring onto your, equip your, your property. Excuse me, you're interrupting, but um, where have there been any cases on that issue that no way to challenge where they put the hole or which trees they, they cut down. Do they have absolute discretion to go in there and do it, or is there? Well, under the trial court's decision, this is this is a survey activity you've got. It's a part of it. If the survey activity is unrelated to appropriation, then they can do it according to the trial court end result, and I think that's wrong. It doesn't preserve the balance. The other thing we argued is that it violates the takings clause. These the Constitution, where if it's a substantial interference, you have to follow the constitutional procedure. And people believe that cutting trees and drilling holes would constitute a substantial interference, although Nexus would di disagree. Well, but to that point, uh, Nexus has taken the position that your, the, that issue, along with the others that are raised in the first four assignments, that's not, of error, that's not true. That's not true. raised below. At page eight of our partial sum, our motion for summary judgment, we raised exactly that issue. At page eight of our brief, we told the trial court these survey activities are so broad they may constitute a violation of the takings clause. And the other assignments of error have likewise been preserved. At page. Uh, At page, uh, I'm sorry, on the takings clause, I was referring to page 5. At page 8, we raised the issue as to 
1.03 requiring a 163.05 petition, and we literally wrote out the notice that's required under 163.041. Nowhere in this case is there legal authority for why the trial court is not applying the requirement that there be a petition under 163.05. When it, in this case, in the Nexus brief, when they quote 163, they take out the words, a petition pursuant to 163.05, and they substitute in the words, an appropriation proceeding. Now, why are they doing that? They're actually going to federal law for this, and they're drafting state law survey law into their federal procedure. We gave the trial court an affidavit from an expert named Carol Elephant, who pointed out that in federal Natural Gas Act, FERC regularly grants a certificate of public necessity and purpose without all the surveys being completed. Regularly. They don't have to. They can acquire the surveys after they're given their certificate. It's absolutely easy to track. They do it. This case becomes what it is because Nexus, in its complaint, said that they signed contracts and they're under pressure financially to get this done in a hurry. They want to get the surveys done in a hurry, so they're trying to create a survey activity that is independent. There is no law that, prior to this action taken by Nexus, that shows survey access, access is independent. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Thank you for your presentations to the court. Um, we will take this matter under advisement.